Sandy River is one of the most prominent features of Oregon. It served as a source of drinking water and recreational fishing for generations. Coho salmon and steelhead trout were abundant in the river and its tributaries, but historic floods and river manipulation endangered about a dozen native species. Conservationist group the Freshwater Trust is using cutting-edge laser technology in its effort to restore the damaged ecosystem. And after decades of displacement, salmon and steelhead are finding their way home. The reason that we're here um, doing river restoration is because for like 30, 40, 50, 60 years, they've been clearing out the large wood out of the stream um, for various reasons to reduce with the idea of reducing floods, um, collecting firewood, they've been doing timber harvest in this area. Um, that, that all stopped back in the 1980s and so since then we've been doing stream restoration in this area. And what happens is when you remove these roughness elements from the system, the, the river responds by getting shorter and straighter. And as it gets shorter and straighter, you have more energy. And as it has more energy, it tends to downcut and become further removed from the floodplain. And what we really want is the water out on the floodplain, because that gives us the habitat complexity and diversity that juvenile salmon and sealhead need. River restoration requires topographic surveys. Traditionally, watersheds have been examined on foot. But Freshwater Trust uses LIDAR, or Light Detection and Ranging, an infrared laser that provides three-dimensional details of the land. This remote sensing technology creates a detailed map of the watershed, which enables them to find restoration sites from a distance. Once we collected LIDAR data via remote sensing, from the office you could essentially see all the historic meander patterns and it really accelerated our ability to find the side channels and figure out how they should work as a system in whole. Currently, the river is this angry river coming off the mountain, going straight down the mountain, uh, very little sinuosity, um, large cobbles and boulders, not very much spawning gravel, very simple stream. And what we're trying to do is make it complex. Today we are actually tipping over whole trees to give us that in-stream large wood component. So with a very low risk to infrastructure, we can kick water out onto the floodplain and essentially let nature decide where it wants those side channel or off channel habitat to be. It's a little bit like Christmas morning right now, you don't know what you're going to get. So the project objective here was to add whole trees to restore floodplain connectivity on this river left floodplain. Right now you're looking down at a secondary channel. The trees, three trees got pulled over, they bridged the secondary channel landed down in the main channel and carried across the floodplain. When we get high water events next winter, the water is going to come down this main channel, get kicked out of the main channel by these three pieces of large wood we just added, and add habitat over there on the floodplain. Some people would come out here and say, oh, this is the most beautiful stream I've ever seen. But when you're looking at it from a fish's eye, it's a very simple habitat. And so using limited resources and the challenges that come with that and going out here and creating, to me, what feels like a magical place for fish um, is just extremely rewarding. You know, I love seeing the habitat and biological response that we get out of these projects. I mean, one thing that's really unique about this is that applied restoration, it's pretty good at going out there and getting the habitat response that that you want to get, whether it's recruiting large wood, whether it's recruiting gravels. What's really neat about salmon and Still Creek is that there's enough productivity in the salmon and steelhead that we'll open a side channel and weeks later it'll fill with juvenile fish. We'll create a main stem pool or a log jam on the main stem salmon. 
recruit gravels that winter and then the following spring we'll have winter steelhead spawning in it. So to immediately see that biological response is tremendously rewarding.